Here it is Tuesday. I'd like to thank you for tuning us in. We've been talking about assurance and doubt over the last few days together. Today, I would like to approach the subject of being spiritually born. We see this subject is approached by Jesus in John 3, 5 through 8, when he's talking to Nicodemus. Jesus answered and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Being born spiritually is much like being born physically. One reason why birth makes such a perfect example of salvation is because all of us have experienced physical birth and can relate to the facts on spiritual birth. You wouldn't be here if you weren't physically born. For example, in birth, conception takes place. Jesus said that we are born of water and the Spirit in order to enter the kingdom of God. Now, water speaks of the Word, and the Spirit means the Spirit of God. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. What is the water? The water is the Word of God, and the Spirit means the Spirit of God. But also, it's a double imperative here. When these come together in the womb of faith, a wonderful conception happens. We are born again, and our life is held forever in his hands. So, by the words you're born, you find out how to be born. John 3, 16. For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But also, when a woman gives birth, her water breaks, and human life is delivered into the world. I've delivered a couple babies when I was a paramedic, and they all had one thing in common. The water had to be broke. Even when I was going through my clinicals and they, we had to go through several cesareans, what happens when the, when the, uh, uh, when the uh, baby is born, when the, uh, the, the embryo sac is broken, there's always water in there. What is it? That's how a baby survives. That's what keeps them safe. And when a woman gives birth, that water is born. I mean, it's broken. When a woman gives birth, her water breaks, and human life is delivered into the world. We are also told in the, by the Bible we have to be born again or born twice. Here's what the Word of God says. Peter says, For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and abiding Word of God. I have people tell me every once in a while, well, everybody's going to heaven. No. Jesus says you have to be born again. That is, accept him as Lord and Savior. Invite him into your heart and make him Lord and Savior. You have to be born twice. Everyone within the sound of my voice has been born once by the water of human delivery. But have you been born twice the second time by the Holy Spirit of God? And, you know, Nicodemus says, how does this happen? What does God say? Well, the wind blows. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it's going. But the wind blows. Praise God, we don't have any control over the wind. It goes where it wants to, and the Holy Spirit does what he wants to. Have you been born again? If you have, praise God for it and rejoice in the new birth. Maybe you're somebody that was born, reborn into the, into the, into the world, kingdom of God and the world of God a long time ago. Rejoice in that birth. Think back over that birth. When did you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If you have not, now's the time. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for just loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.